strict NASA. There I am. To boldly go to Houston. NASA is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The four letters that are underlined spell NASA. Why is the Johnson Space Center important to Texas? NASA in Houston trains astronauts. Operates mission control where they monitor human spaceflight from takeoff to landing. There I am in front of the real mission control center. That's a flight director seat. If anybody in the world, even the President of the United States of America, came in and said, I want you to land them now or anything else, they could say, no, they are in charge. That's the original mission control console. Why is the Johnson Space Center important to Texas? NASA in Houston launches people and rockets into space. This is the actual Gemini 5. It barely fit two astronauts inside of it. And they said it was like sitting in a phone booth. A Mercury like this took the first American astronaut to space. And the second. Little Joe is really important. They did some really important tests on it. Made some astronauts learn a lot. I know what you're thinking. If that's Little Joe, where's Big Joe? This must be Big Joe. There's more. And more. I think you get the point. It's big. Can you find me? But it's not called Big Joe. It's called Saturn V. The V is a Roman V. It was the biggest rocket in its day, big enough to take the Apollos to the moon. <laughs> including the Apollo 17. This is a part of the last actual Apollo to go to the moon. It orbited the moon with one astronaut inside of it, while the lunar module went down with the two other astronauts to the moon. This um, command module helped communicate with Earth, and it's how all three astronauts got home. It also carried home the most moon rock out of all the Apollos. NASA in Houston houses and studies over 800 pounds of moon rock. Speaking of the moon, in NASA's museum, you can touch a moon rock. I felt so close to the moon. This must be how a star feels. Thank you, thank you, I am a star! NASA in Houston employs over 14,000 people. That's a lot of Texans getting jobs. People like R1, R2's older brother. Okay, he's a robot, like R2. But this museum guide is human. He's letting me hold a piece of the space shuttle. Turns out he's a retired NASA project manager who's managed the training for Apollo 11, worked on the space shuttle from day one. So I asked him my question. Why is NASA important? Why is it important? Well, let's see. That thing you just had in your hand? Okay, that material is used for petrochemical workers, race car drivers, pilots, and firemen because it's capable of withstanding 15 to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's another reason why NASA is important. The stuff that they make for space helps us here on Earth. I also asked for an autograph. So you can see there's lots of reasons why NASA is important to Texas and the world. So what does the future hold? Why else is NASA important? I'm going straight to the top of this. Here's Milo and I'm about to meet Commander Chow. Nice 
nice to meet you. Oh, it was really exciting and scary meeting a real astronaut. I wanted to know why NASA was important, so I made the trip to Houston. There's NASA. What's been going on? Why is NASA important? Well, NASA, especially the Johnson Space Center here in Texas, is the uh, is the center for human spaceflight, and so they're responsible for all the missions that uh, go up into space for people. And you know, I think the space program is important because it inspires young people like yourself to want to go and do great things. I think that's the most important part of what NASA is. Inspired. I was totally inspired. In the car, I've been making a model of a satellite that I could, that I think, thought that could be used for an awesome. Oh, yeah? You've been making your own satellite. Well, That's pretty paper, cool. Yeah? Yeah, excellent. Well, Good. You can be a, you can be a scientist in the future or an engineer. <laughs> engineer? A scientist? Wow, maybe. When you come in a child, know what he wanted to be. Being an astronaut was something I wanted to do since I was a kid. I was eight years old watching the first Apollo moon landing, and that's kind of where it all started. He started dreaming this when he was a kid, like me. I spent 15 years at NASA and had the opportunity to fly four times in space, including my most recent mission on the, as the commander of the International Space Station. Three, two, one. He's taking off to spend six months in space. From the perspective of space, you look down at the Earth and it really takes your breath away. The International Space Station was created to be the premier microgravity laboratory, and what that means is that it's a place where you can do scientific experiments in space. You know, how do things develop, how do biological systems react to that environment, how do they develop differently. You know, those are experiments that you can't do on the ground because there's gravity. But a laboratory needs support. You need power to not just do the experiments, but also run the space station. And all of this power is supplied by solar energy. If you look at the space station, you see the solar arrays. Those are all collecting energy from the sun to convert it into electricity. During an orbit, uh, half your orbit generally is in sunlight and half of it is in shade. So when you're on the sun side, you're charging your batteries. And then when you're in the darkness, you're discharging your batteries and using the power that you store during your sunlight pass. My partner, Salajan Sharipov, took this picture. And it shows me in a Russian spacesuit with one of the solar arrays attached to the International Space Station. Technology keeps moving forward. And in the future, I think what we'll see are constellations of solar satellites. We could actually create the solar power and then beam it back down to the Earth to collection points. You can think of those as your substations and distribute those to, to homes and businesses. The sun could power our future. What other plans does NASA have for us? Oh, we're developing a new program. Yeah, so we've got a new spacecraft called uh, Orion that's being built. And uh, we've also got um, a new family of rockets that are being designed. And so NASA's directing all of that. To Milo, best wishes, Leroy Chow. How cool is that? Higgins Heroes. Hello, Higgins Heroes. There you have it. A real astronaut inspiring us all with his bright visions of the future. Thank you, Commander Chow. It was an honor. That's one small step for Milo. One giant leap for Cape Cod. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero. Reach for the stars. Now that your hands are up, do you have any questions? Well, since you're not here, email your questions to my dad. I'll get back to you.
back, my back. NASA, Commander Leroy Chow, Jerry L. Brown, the 100 People Foundation, for the footage of Commander Chow. You can see their uncut video at LeroyChow.com. Thanks to my brother Elliot and Dad for their production assistance. Thanks to Mrs. Sagans for this wonderful assignment. And thanks to my class for liking it. Most of the pictures and videos we took ourselves, but the stuff we borrowed we really appreciate, especially the music. It rocked, and Dad it does too. <laughs> you can cut that part. Let's all touch the moon together. And this is almost four billion years old, guys. I just hope you're going to use it for good. Stay on target, buddy. You can do it, kid. Oh. Well done, buddy. You did it.